the Quinn Mar Show. This episode is brought to you by CG Electric. If there's one thing I'm not good at, I mean, one of many, it's uh, dealing with any electrical at my house, besides maybe using a light switch. But that's where CG Electric comes in. Whether it be both residential or commercial, CG Electric is your go-to. You can find them on Google just by searching CG Electric, as well as Instagram at CG underscore electric underscore company. Again, find them on Google by searching CG Electric and on Instagram at CG underscore electric underscore company. Let them know that Quinn sent you. This show is brought to you by Bing Pot Trivia. How many times have you been to a trivia night where it just felt like somebody reading questions? Well, Bing Pot Trivia prides themselves on bringing high energy dynamic hosts to every event. The show leans heavily on visual elements. Their questions are designed to make you laugh or roll your eyes, while also challenging your knowledge on pop culture, high school science, culinary arts, and everything in between. Their typical show runs five rounds, including a photo round, general knowledge on pop culture, riffs on different game shows, absurd 50-50 questions, and a super sweet music round. Check out bingpottrivia.com today to book your trivia night. Again, that is a bingpottrivia.com. Tell my boy Danny that your friend Quinn sent you. All right, let's get on with the show. So my next guest has voiced almost every character a 90s kid could think of, from TV show behemoth like Dragon Ball Z to creating shows like Yvonne of the Yukon and Being Ian, as well as voicing the main character of my personal favorite, What's With Andy. This guest was basically on my TV 24-7 uh, growing up. It's a pleasure to welcome to the Quinn Mars Show, Ian James Corlett. Ian, how's it going? Great. Thanks for that uh, glowing intro. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thank you for coming on. I, I appreciate you. Um, so just kind of getting into it, obviously, I know you're you're a Burnaby, BC kid. So um, growing up in the 60s and 70s in Burnaby, uh, what was that like? Like, were you a sports guy? Were you always like into the TV movie world? What was your upbringing like? Uh, my it, it's a that's a great question. I was not a sports guy. Big surprise. Um, and the interesting thing to me now, uh, when people talk about Vancouver and and Burnaby specifically, um, it it is a known uh, TV and movie production center. Like lots of stuff gets made there. There's a, a full sort of mini Universal Studios back lot. Uh, literally a mile from where I went to school now. That's so cool. But then there was nothing like yeah, zero. So I was told I was always into entertainment. I was always into movies and TV. I was a huge animation nerd. Um, a, a lot of um, a, a lot of people who end up in voice acting, you know, will tell you, here I am bad mouthing other people right off the bat. We're not even two minutes into it. <laughs> and, and, you know, they'll say, Oh no, I've, I've really been into cartoons my whole life. And uh, usually they're an actor who somehow kind of fell into voice and then ended up, you know, doing well at it. Me, I was just, I was totally into animation as a kid. Um, it actually, st my, my voice stuff started uh, with, uh puppets like i oh. really i did puppet shows yeah so like when i was really young you know i'm talking like uh six seven eight years old anytime there's an opportunity at school i would do like a puppet show and then that um sort of ended up morphing into ventriloquism i i had a ventriloquist dummy and you know did kids parties and stuff in my early teens so I was always doing something with my voice, but I was totally into movies, animation. I had a I had a poster of Walt Disney on my wall. This is, cool. you know, before there was ever a Disney store. The only place you could buy anything was Disneyland. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I was I was a TV and movie nerd like from the get go. Now, obviously, we'll get into like how you got into the voice acting and stuff. But like even as a kid you clearly i know off clearly you went through puberty but as a kid before that like was your voice would you say like a voice for voice acting how many times can i say voice in one sentence <laughs> i would say 
Yeah. I mean, I was always doing stuff with my voice. Right. So yeah, now I never, ever thought that I would be on the radio. I, I didn't work for a radio station. My, my actual introduction to voice acting was through commercials uh, because uh, just to backtrack a little bit, what did exist in Vancouver was a, a very vibrant um, audio production industry. So uh, music and voiceover for com radio commercials and TV commercials was something that was happening. Mm -hmm. That's why I ended up gravitating towards it because when I, just to sort of go back a little bit, when I, um, you know, I went through uh, uh, ventriloquism and then I started making films, which is, you know, not to skip ahead, but that's what being in the, the series was based on. Yeah. So that's real. <clears throat> and so I won uh, the BC Film Festival, the BC Student Film Festival. I, I won the Most Promising Filmmaker Award, 1980. Wow. And then I didn't make another film because yeah. there was no, what I wanted to do was sort of do the Spielberg where like you work at a studio and you, you know, get to know how films are made and that kind of stuff. But we, there was no business here. Like I would have gone to work for the CBC or, you know, CTV and, you know, maybe been a cameraman. And I just didn't, that wasn't like doing it for me. Right. So I realized that I had abilities with my voice because of that history of, you know, puppets and stuff. So I had sort of attacked the um, uh, the commercial production uh, facilities and went, I, I think I can do this. So that's that's, you know, what I did. I'd never I didn't want to be on the radio. I didn't want to be a radio guy. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different world and a whole different you know skill set. Um, but I'll tell you one thing. I never really thought I was going to end up doing commercials with my voice, let alone animation, like just sounding basically like this. Because mm -hmm. in those era or those years, um, you know, you heard a radio commercial and it was like, you know, everyone sounded like an announcer. You know, the, everyone was very polished and and very deep, unlike me. I mean, my natural this I've sounded like this since I was 18. basically. Yeah. Um, so I didn't think I was going to end up doing that. But it, that's the way it worked out, because the, the whole the whole advertising vibe changed. And suddenly I started getting these, you know, calls and auditions for, no, 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 just sound like you. And I, what you want to, cause I was a character guy. I would do accents and, you know, any radio commercial that needed something kind of fun and, you know, odd. Yeah. That's kind of what I started with. So, yeah, I don't know if I, if I ever, I, to answer your question, I didn't think like I was going to be a voice, you know, like an right. announcer, but I knew I could act cause I did that in school. Well, and now I was just going to ask that, like, um, I'm not sure if um, you were in like uh, musicals or plays or anything, but like, yep. were you also the kid at the lunch table doing funny voices to your friends and stuff as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, one of the things I did, um, I don't know how old I was, but, you know, again, skipping ahead to being in, we we uh, the family business was a piano store, like for real. And we used to rent uh, pianos to people and you know sometimes they would be late on payments and sometimes people they'd be really late so uh geez I, what would i be i was probably 19 because i was out of school i was already working at the store and uh, i decided to to make the collection calls in a character voice so i i i made up this character of eric and and he would phone people and he'd go yeah this is eric uh, calling from music man you know the the place you rented the piano from are you planning on making that payment or do we have to come out and see you <laughs> it was just so for me it was so much fun yeah and i had a, a very good track record of uh, getting the customers in within the next day to that's pay. amazing they didn't want to meet eric <laughs> were, were you a were you a, a prank call person mm. I would think so with the amount of voices you can do. But I will neither confirm or deny that. <laughs> the people you're prank calling are still wondering who it was. They might be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first credit I could find of uh, your work besides commercials was Mowgli and the Adventures of Mowgli. You know, <sighs> I've seen that too. I don't think that's right. No. And that one thing... <laughs> A lot of people think it's like the Jungle Book, the Disney Jungle Book. It's not. No. Um, I do remember doing that production, but I don't think that was the first thing that I did. I think no. the first thing 
in animation that I did, because I think that's kind of what your question is. Yeah. Um, I believe it was Kissy Fur, which I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if it's on any of any of the credit lists. It, it, maybe it is. Hmm. It was either it was Kissy Fur. There was a few other things that came in. Actually, there was an early Barbie movie too. I might have done something on. Interesting. Um, you, you know, you'd think I would know that. What was your first animation gig? Hey, you've done know. a lot. I don't blame you. You have done a lot. Well, there was a bunch of stuff that happened in in a year or so. Like one of the mm -hmm. biggest ones early on, like where I really went, chick, this is okay. This is something was Captain N, the Game Master. Mm -hmm. That was like a big, you know, it was based on Nintendo it was on NBC. It's kind of a big deal. So I remember that one, but I know there was a few little ones before that, but it was all right. around, I don't know, 86, 87. You, you need to write to IMDb. Tell them to get their facts. Straight. I know. Um, I, know. I was going to ask though, was there, a, there was a gap between 73 and 87. What was either, is that incorrect or like, what was the reason for that? Well, what was the 73? Was that the, the, the jungle Mowgli. book thing? Yeah. Yeah. See, I was not doing anything in 73. I would have yeah, been you 11. Would have been, wait, I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, by the way, happy birthday. It is your birthday. Today. I know. I thank appreciate you. you coming on on your birthday. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get to be my age. Nothing's going on on your birthday. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Between 73 and 87, it's on IMDb. There's nothing. Yeah. Well, because the 73 is, is a mistake. It, right. I think, I think they probably made that Mowgli thing in 73 and then we reversioned it or something mm. like dubbed it right much later right okay that makes sense then okay yeah because that that was one thing i was like did he just do one thing not like and take a break but no yeah. that's a that's a mistake on yeah 11 year old ian went i don't know i don't think this is for me <laughs> <laughs> i'm good i'm done um so um obviously like i said there were so many shows that um you were in that were like just on my tv growing up um one of them was of course dragon ball z and you were Goku. Now, you're the original English voice, correct? Yes. Now, the popularity of Dragon Ball Z in Japan and then it coming over to Canada, did you know about that? No. Nope. Okay. Not hmm. at all. We we had a, a partner and I had a company um, where we did some writing. We did some production uh, back in those days. And Vancouver became quite well known for reversioning any kind of TV, but a lot of animation. So we, we got a bunch of animated series coming through our doors. And our job was to take like the raw Japanese trans to English translation, almost like Google Translate. Oh. And, you know, making it make sense after that. Because like the raw translation is kind of like, it doesn't make any sense. So we did that and we did a bunch of shows. And then this Dragon Ball project comes through the door and all we knew is that there was a bunch of them and we, oh, okay sure it's, it's another job so i can't i can't say that i cast myself but I, I i was definitely involved at a at an executive level well that that was a good choice so we you know we we just worked like that because we were writing and and like we were involved i mean right. i remember the day uh the guys from funimation um uh, from Texas walked through the doors. They, they came in and went, we hear you guys know how to do this. Uh, here's this project. And we went, Oh, okay, sure. So yeah, I was the original Goku. Um, and it was, it, it was, again, it was just another job. Right. And it was, we had no idea other than the number of episodes that it was going to be, you know, huge. We certainly had no, I wouldn't have dreamt that like 25, 30 years later, I'd be talking about Goku. Insane. Like, especially as like the one, the probably one of the most famous things I ever did. Right. And I stopped doing it. I like, I, I just went, this is, there was a lot of screaming. Yeah, that's true. I, I didn't love enough. that. Um, and there was some, some, you know, without getting too far into the weeds or details or anything. We had some some issues with the with the company that ended up doing the hands on production, the voice mm. contracts and stuff. And 
you know, it's stupid things like, you know, you could get paid by the line or by the hour. And I was pretty quick. So like paid by the line was better. Ooh. So I, I started, you know, just kind of keeping a, I guess it's, I guess it's a hashtag. What is it? What do they call that? Where you go, you know, one, two, three, four, five. What is, there's a name for that. You know, those little. Oh yeah. When you do the tally. The ta Yeah. Anyway. I so I started, tally up and you cross it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I don't, kind of, I don't know the name either. You know, I did a line, did, did another line, did, did another line. And this is not, this is not, you know, drug culture stuff. So settle down. <laughs> we did no lines. So I record my lines. And then I, you know, walk into the, it was like, you know, going in, into the, the pay office in some factory and, you know, present, here's how many lines I did. And they went, oh, no, no, no. You did like, you've got 30% uh, more lines than you really recorded. And I went, well, I don't think so. And then they said something, something along the lines of, well, no, no, no. Those are vocalizations. The other ones, they are, they aren't actually words. And I, th I said, excuse me, you mean all the screams that are 15 to 30 seconds long? Oh that's God. you're saying that's a vocalization. So we had a little, uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah. And I said, you know, uh, you can use the Japanese guy then. Cause I'm not going to wear my voice out on that. You just use the, uh, Use the existing. Yeah, why wouldn't like, they just use the ones that were already like? It's not like well, the were were much different. They were. They actually they were really. Oh, were they? Yeah, because it was a lady that did oh, Goku originally. Huh. Yeah, so it sounded really different. Oh, so well, I just went. Nice. You know, I was busy doing other stuff. I was on. You know, real what what I would call real shows. You know, like uh, Beast Wars and stuff like that. And I just, I don't have the time for this. Right. Plus, the pay was terrible. Yeah. Now, had I had a crystal ball and realized that there was there would be this huge fan base 20, 30 years later, I probably would have stuck to it and just went, oh, fine. You know, because there will be a there will be some form of residual payday later. Right. But there was nothing. There was no right. no hope of it. No anything. So that's that's the short story of why and how i became and then didn't do go yeah because when i was going through it i saw you'd only done like a chunk of episodes compared to how many episodes there really was on the show so yeah i'm, I'm glad you answered that because i didn't i didn't even i was about to ask <laughs> you but yeah I, I that that was something i was interested in yeah well i had a uh, someone came up to me once and i i thought wow this is great and be careful because i'm i'm gonna c compare myself to someone actually famous um they said you know it's like James Bond films, right? They've made a bunch of them and there's been a bunch of James Bonds, but there's only one first James Bond in the movies. And that that's Sean Connery. I went, Ooh, Oh boy. I like that. I just got compared to Sean Connery. Yeah, really? <laughs> right on. That, but, yeah, that's good. Bottom line. It, there's the first one and, and there is, you know, history shows like everyone that replaced me, there was two or three after me. They were trying to sound like me. I mean, it, it, the, the guy who does it now, he's kind of put, he's made it his world. Right. And he sounds like what he sounds like. I don't think he's trying to imitate me when he goes into the studio. But initially, that's what it was. Right. That's awesome. Um, and you mentioned about the line thing about you, you're paid by the lines or by the hour. Is that still how it works? No, no, it, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't. I'm not even sure how it works now. I think it's just a session fee. Right. And you cram as many lines as you can. You can. True. Interesting. Wonder why that changed. I mean, maybe well, because that, people were doing a, either or, I guess. In in the years that I was talking about it, that was in Vancouver and it was a different union. It was they were the 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 agreement was constantly changing. Uh and there's lots of reasons for that. Not the least of which is just, you know, the the producer of record just loved renegotiating and finding any little thing that they could change and, you know, get a little edge and save a, a nickel. Um, so that's why uh, it, it's confusing because it did change all the time. And then the, the U S uh, agreements are completely different. So I, I, this is a moment in time back huh, in vancouver that's that's really cool i didn't know that um a couple other uh shows will i'll just like uh fire off quickly that i was a big fan of sticking around roly poly which i don't think you were you did a couple episodes i, I wrote 
some. Oh, roly you wrote polies. a couple episodes of Roly Poly. Yeah, I won a I won a Gemini Award for that. No way. I did. That's I loved that show. I think that for, was for Canadian those of you Canada. Americans, maybe who are yeah. listening. That's like the Canadian equivalent of an Emmy. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think Roly Poly Oly was Family Channel. I think I can't. Yeah, remember. I think so. It was Disney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be been, Family Channel. Been family. Yeah, there the amount of between I would go between Nickelodeon, Family, YTV, Teletoon. Like I had all the channels favorited, so then I would just click one in, and then they'd all be in my little. Oh, list. that's funny. Did yeah. you know? Here's a piece of trivia. Uh, since you mentioned um, Family Channel, I was the voice of Family Channel for years. No way. Coming up next on Family, that was me. Oh my gosh. He was, I, I actually just showed my fiance the other day. Cause like, we're both like, I mean, clearly I am a big, a big fan of like nostalgia. And yeah. Being a kid. I showed her the other day. It was like a 10 minute YouTube video of commercials and bumpers of family channel. So that oh. most of them will probably would have been probably, you. Probably. Yeah. On family, on family, on family. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> I did not know that. That's so cool. Yeah. Family channel was like my go-to because being in Canada, uh, we didn't have Disney Channel. Yeah, that was that was the that was my Disney. Disney Channel. Yep. Right. Yeah, and um, I had actually I'd, I'd spoke to someone recently who was on a Family Channel show that was shown on Disney, and um, I didn't. They explained to me about how it worked that like Family Channel owned it, but Disney like not borrowed it, but like licensed it in a way. Yeah, it's a licensing deal because right, yeah, I I I can only assume that someone in in the you know executive broadcasting business in Canada went. We're not just letting Disney come in here and, you know, because it, the the rules in Canada are, uh, you know, a hit show on NBC. We don't have NBC in Canada. We have global. We have a uh, city. We, and so they're always, even though it's all American product and we know it came from NBC, they broadcast it on a Canadian specific channel. So it's right. similar with Family Channel. Right. Yeah. And I, I remember there all like there there obviously was like the uh shows that were on Disney that were shown on family, but then there was a, that like select few that were strictly on family. Yes. Right. Cause I, I guess I guess there wasn't the popularity or Yeah, or they'd be maybe produced in Canada. True. Fair. Um, so I mean, I don't know if you'd remember this. W were you the voice that did um, I remember seeing this in the bumpers and commercials yesterday when I watched it was saying powered by the, was it powered by the magic of Disney? Ooh. So it was like family channel powered by the magic of Disney. You know, I think that can, that might've come in after I, um, I finished doing it. Cause I, I'll find, I'll find the video later yeah. and I'll send it to you and you can, you can figure yeah, out. If it's yeah, yeah. Or not. That's so cool. That's so weird that I was just watching that yesterday. Um, so obviously, uh, a couple more shows. What about Mimi? Big fan of oh, that yeah. one. That, I was a big fan of that one. And then one of my, one of my favorite, uh, TV shows, movies, and then games, like in real life, like action figures was rescue heroes. And you're oh, in rescue wow. heroes, the movie. That's right. Yeah. So, um, when I was a kid, I had that like big tower that they like all yeah, like, yeah. Work and live in. So I had that huge thing for Christmas. And I was just talking to my parents the other day about my dad, like scrambling Christmas Eve, putting it together to make sure like it looked all good for me. Right. Uh, that, that was a gift from my parents versus obviously I got gifts from Santa. So, well, um, yeah. yeah. So I was just talking about that and like how much I was obsessed with rescue heroes. So, um when you were in rescue heroes did you know about like the popularity of the toys kind of yeah because I, I think i would see them in the stores right um because what year would that have been Ooh, i remember it being early 2000s was when i um would play with the toys and let me check um would have been early 2000s because i'm a 96 so yeah would yeah have been about when i was about five to six let me see it is rescue heroes this is I think I, I must have. Yeah, I must have bought stuff for my kids. Are, oh, are, am I around the same age? My yeah, my son was born in 97. So oh, OK, I think I must have bought something. Yeah. Rescuer is a movie uh, was released 2003. Yeah. OK. OK, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, I, I don't think was it James. I think your character's name was. It wasn't one of the rescue heroes. No, no, I no. was I was ancillary. I think they would call that. Mm -hmm. i can't remember yeah so that must have been still i know obviously even though you weren't one of the action figures that'd probably still be cool to buy the toys for your kids and yeah movie. yeah yeah of course 
This episode is brought to you by Douglas Works. Douglas Works is a full service lawn, landscape, and property maintenance company. From lawn care to landscape design and install the gardens, tree removal, excavating, grading, junk removal, window cleaning, and so much more. Almost anything outside, they've got you covered. As the leaves turn, they're gearing up for fall cleanups and snow removal. You can call, text, or email to book your call service today. That's 705-868-1981 or douglasworks87 at gmail.com. Once again, you can call, text, or email to book your call services. 705-868-1981 or douglasworks87 at gmail.com. Um, and then creating your own show and yeah. correct me if i'm wrong yvonne the yukon was the first one yvonne of the yukon i co-created with uh, my partner terry Klassen at the time um but yes that that was the first created by credit that i had which is which i remember as a kid just thinking like this is such a weird show but like oh, i was so intrigued. weird i mean i was a weird kid and i'm weird now so i was like this is so like, cool i love yeah, it the stuff we got away with was was incredible <laughs> i mean and okay, another little piece of trivia. Absolutely. I wrote the the well, co-wrote the theme song for Ivana the Yukon. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, because I mean, <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember the lyric. Uh, Yvonne was a man. A mutts need to pee. That's how he got <laughs> defrosted. <laughs> the big the big ice cube filled with a Frenchman. And he got thawed out by a Husky's pee. I love it. I love it. And I, I didn't even realize this, maybe because I was a kid and like, just like my perspective, but it only ran for 16 episodes. No, it had to be more than that. It had to be more. I, I don't know. I, I was looking at it and I, I, I thought, I thought so. But when I read it, I'll, I'll pull up right now. Um, it, it, that's what, that's what it looked like. It was, so it was in 19. <clears throat> oh, okay. No, I was wrong. Sorry. 44. I don't know where I got 16. Yeah, that sounds about right. But but 16, sometimes they, like they'll say, uh, you know, a season or or a video release. Oh, or no. You like know what? I, I read it wrong because there was different uh, voices of Yvonne, it looks like. No. Because it says it says Drew was the voice of Yvonne for 16 episodes. Again, I'm going on, on off IMDb. Yeah, clearly. and you know, we, we both it, realize that, that it can't always be. Correct. It's true the whole time, and well, and I know that. I've seen that kind of thing before. Yeah, where for some reason it's the way the computer uh, decides the title of the show, and in fact, the yeah. series is much longer. But it's like, well, the anyway, it's it's complicated. It's a glitch for sure. That's so but Drew weird. is the voice. Like he I'm, was... I'm never uh, trusting IMDb again. No, ever. Don't. I mean, it's I, a good guide. I've been twice. It's a good guide. Um. So yeah. Um. It was on. Um. Correct. YTV. So yes. When you co-create a show, and then you start going around to sell it, how does that work? Well, it's kind of the first thing you do is sell it. Yeah. And then and then you start making it. So there was Ooh. quite a, an ordeal in you know. Pitching it, we we made that with Studio B, who also made uh, what about Mimi, and Demina Leagues, um, oh, Kid versus Cat. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you 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 present everything. You, you present scripts. You present visuals, all of that kind of stuff before you get a deal, and mm -hmm. YTV loved it. And then you have like they're only a, a portion of the budget. Then you have to go partner with international broadcasters to it's really tough to get a show yeah. made in Canada. Like yeah. really tough. No one just writes you a check. You gotta oh. like it's like a jigsaw puzzle of investors. Interesting. So uh you so you sell it and then obviously or yeah, you sell it, then you create then you it. start making it. Yeah. So that must that must be really hard a really hard sell to sell something to somebody that like doesn't exist. Yeah, it is. Did, I, did, I you, mean, get, did I, you get some people that are like, obviously YTV was the final, the final one, but like, did you get some networks who are like, no, this is oh, yeah. the stupidest thing in the world. We're not Lots. doing this. Yeah. Lots. But it's oh. funny where, where it really did resonate and really was popular. Uh, England and Germany. Cause I, hmm. cause we were making fun of the French, I guess. 
Right. I guess. I don't know. I got to go back and rewatch the show. I remember the theme song perfectly, but I do not remember the actual episodes of the show. I remember his little friend. Oh, you Tommy. Know? Yes. I remember Tommy did well. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, we had like a in, big indigenous character played by, um, oh, ah, oh, I was just, I just texted him a, a month ago. What was his name? Uh, was it, uh, what, what character? Bill. Uh, Glenn. 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 He's, he's in a bunch of like on camera TV shows. You'll, you'll see it if you're on IMDb. Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what's correct and what's not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, it'll be more or less correct for yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it, like I, I thought it like, what a crazy cast. I also played Willie Tidwell, the, the bureaucrat on that mm -hmm. and Louis the 14th. <laughs> Uh, so I was, uh, I, I, I straddled the, uh, the continents. I was French and a little Canadian bureaucrat. That's amazing. So uh, we'll get into being Ian because, and obviously, um, you, it was about you, but did you ever for Avon, did you ever think about voicing him? No, no. Cause no. we wanted just something wanted to be the co-creator or co-writer. Yeah. We really, I, I considered being, uh, uh, Tommy because that was really in my range. Um, but no, we wanted something really distinctive and, you know, I'm the Drew, the guy who played Yvonne. I mean, that's what he sounds like, except he doesn't have the French accent, Really? Um, which I don't think you could do today. No, he has to be Quebecois or he has to be French. Probably. That's, that's Probably. just the way it is. Yeah. So. See, and I, that's why I'm glad I obviously was able to come out when it did. And it's not, it might sound like I'm saying it because it was on YTV, but it, that it felt like a YTV show. It did, yeah. Like the stuff that was on YTV, it was like that just like fits right in the middle between like uh oh the game show and uh, I can't even think of another show right now. It's been so long since I watched YTV, but like it it would fit in that bracket of shows. Yeah, it was a bit weird. It was a bit Nickelodeon-y. I would see. I would say like Teletoon as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously because Teletoon was like a weird mixture of stuff. Like, and then Teletoon also had the Teletoon at night where it was like Robot Chicken, Family right. Guy had that nice. all right. So like. Teletoon was also like a weird mixture of well Teletoon shit. was was trying to be the the Canadian Cartoon Network. Yes. And they and I'm pretty sure it was Teletoon that showed things like Dexter's Laboratory. I think so. The, kid, the Kids Next Door which was all obviously car, uh, Cartoon Network. So Yeah, I think so. That's just like the family and Disney thing. It's that's I never really put those together. Yep. Until right now. Interesting. I think YTV did that less, I think. Like I said, I need to get like a rundown of like the shows because I cannot remember. But like, I think YTV was like took stuff from Nickelodeon as well. They I think had, so. Yeah, I think that's true. Like iCarly and stuff. Right. Interesting. I'm just remembering this all on the fly. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now, like a wave of nostalgia. <laughs> um, so I want to get into literally my favorite show and um, what made me want to do pranks, which a few years ago I did do pranks on ah. YouTube. Uh, what are you going with this one? Yeah, it was uh, what's with Andy? Well, well, what, what's with Andy? Well, well, what's with Andy? I love that so much. I, I, um, I was talking to my parents about that yesterday and they didn't remember just by the name, so I showed them the theme song. They're like, Yeah, we whoa, whoa, yes. what's with Andy? Well, well, what's with Andy? Yeah, this episode is also brought to you by West Will Photos. Yes, I'm reading this only because there's so much I need to tell you about West Will Photos that I didn't want to forget. So as someone who is not photogenic whatsoever, having the right photographer means everything. Trevor from West Will Photos makes sure he captures real, authentic moments in every single photo. Whether it be for your wedding, couples photos, or your family album needing a major update, Trevor will be there. Check out www.westwillphotos.com as well as West Will Photos on Facebook and at westwill.photos on Instagram today and book your session. Once again, that's at www.westwillphotos.com, as well as Westwill Photos on Facebook and at westwill.photos on Instagram today and book your session. All right, let's keep going with the episode. So voicing a teenager, was that like difficult? No. No? Just don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't look at me. Even then, I mean, like, I, I don't know how old I was when I did that. Mm -hmm. Uh it would have been 2000, so... You would have been your 40s? Yeah, it would have been 40. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That was... Man, that that was... That was pivotal um, in my career because 
I had worked with these guys, um, the one of one of the executive producers who was from L.A. And what did I work with him on previously? I think I worked with him on some mainframe shows like, um, oh, shoot, what was it called? Not Wacky Racers, something Racers. No, no, it wasn't Racers. Anyway. Mm. Was it right before What's With Andy? Yeah. Let me see if I can find it as you try to think. Like a year or two before. Alien Racers? No. Oh, that was after. It was not, it's not Racers. It was, I think my name was... Oh wow, this is this is bad. I, I I do not blame you in the least. The amount of stuff you have done, you know I'm gonna I don't look blame it up. You all, I'm gonna look it up. That's what we do today, right? We look exactly. things up. Yeah, that's what I'm. Was it even maybe, if you're on a you know big action time man interview show? What what what? Maybe Action Man. No, no. I get carpal tunnel by going through your IMDb. <laughs> that's how many. That's how many different shows and, and things you've been on. It's insane. Weirdos weirdos that's what it was okay yes and i because i i was thinking racers because he drove a, a crazy car oh and that was on for uh from 99 2005 yeah wow, so okay. i worked with a guy um on that and he had this new show which was what's with andy and they wanted to they wanted to record in the u.s and write the scripts in the U.S. Hmm. and have it, uh, the animation and everything else done in Canada. So what they needed <clears throat> is they needed, like, there's it's a point system to be, at least at that time, uh, to be able to access Canadian tax credits, Canadian bonuses in production. So one of the things that would get help them reach the threshold was if the main character was a Canadian actor. Oh. So I was really fortunate because I knew the guy and we, you know, I, I still auditioned with everyone else and they went, I think you're the guy. And that was the beginning of my working in the U S oh, so they fast tracked, you know, it felt like Hollywood. It, like it was amazing. Uh, they fast tracked a work permit and they said, okay, you're the guy. We're going to fly you down every two weeks and we're going to do three or four episodes and then you're going to go back and then we'll see you in another two weeks. And so I was like going back and forth between Vancouver and LA. Wow. And I had this work permit and I kept that up and I ended up working, you know, cause I had some friends that were directors and stuff in the, in LA. I ended up doing Batman, you know, just like some guest stuff, but still big series. Um, uh, Oh, what, uh, what's the, the one with the three, girl spy spies totally spies totally spies it did some totally oh, another spies. Teletoon. stuff like that yeah um anyway so even after what's with andy was done i maintained that work permit because i wanted to work in the states ah. and then it eventually you know in 20 after 2016 2015 i moved to la and uh then I eventually did a green card, but that was all from what's with Andy. What's with Andy. And then is that the longest running show you're on? Cause that was six seasons or six years. <sighs> no, I think, I think dinosaur train might've been the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a PBS. Yes. Yeah. yeah. PBS kids. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Cause I, I, I always remember, I mean, I thought I mean, it could have just been like, as like a kid brain, but I remember what's with Andy being on for a long time. It was. Yeah, it was. And the, here's a this is weird. Um, we did. The first. Two seasons. Anyway, we did we did a chunk in that working environment where I was flying back and forth and going to L.A. And then uh, because we were uh, they were in partnership with Fox Kids. That was the the producer of record. And we were like they actually had a building. They had a Fox Kids tower oh that's sweet in west hollywood is the weirdest thing wow yeah. it, it i just felt like you know oh now okay i've arrived i'm working in hollywood yeah, yeah. that's awesome that's it was so kind of cool. cool yeah but, no that, that that was definitely as like a as a kid that watched all those those networks teletune to me first thing i think of is what's with andy so did you notice when the voices not mine but when the other voices changed 
Not that I could think of. Not well, not then as, they did a good. Like, they I did a good job because I mean, yes and no because like as like a little kid, yeah, you were a little kid, were noticing that. But like I maybe if I went back and rewatched it now, I'd notice why. What happened was it like everyone switched but you? Yeah, because I oh. I was the only Canadian with a room full of Americans when we were doing it at Fox Kids. So like we, I was working with, uh, um, uh, Tom Kenny, the voice of uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Um, absolute number one favorite show SpongeBob. d d bradley baker who does everything uh a bunch of guys uh, like tim conway was a guest star that's really that's a deep dive mm -hmm. uh for anyone young he was on the uh the carol burnett show anyway so all of those family members and other characters they were all american actors and there was something that happened and fox kids went i think well i think fox kids might have been going out of business and the Canadian arm of the company went, we still want to make what's with Andy. So we're going to recast everything other than me, because I was Canadian huh. and they did it. I think they did it out of Montreal. So huh. his sister, uh, the parents, all of those characters were recast. And I recorded in Vancouver for till the end of the series. Yeah. And everyone else recorded in, in Montreal. I, I after this, I'm going to go rewatch it. Yeah. I'm gonna go see if I. Yeah, I, you'll I you'll you'll notice at yeah. some point. I'm couple, not sure when was it was. It couple, I was just gonna say, was it a couple seasons in? No idea. Something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. See, and this is why, like, having someone like you on is because, like, it's so cool because of all the the little tidbits you've been able to share so far. So that's really cool. Um, another YTV show, if I'm not mistaken, being Ian, of course. Yeah. Ian is you. Yeah. Uh, so creating the show was this about the same like the same process as uh of on the yukon as yeah. like the creating to bring it to a network everything like that that took even longer really um get you, this. You, i'm surprised because like i feel like you had the credit of creating uh, a show doesn't matter interesting what have you done for me lately true and okay so there was a, a, a i'm briefly touched on the points system for financing and you know getting money out of out of various uh government agencies in canada to produce programming and <laughs> so as you well know uh being in was set in burnaby like burnaby bc canada not some imaginary small town, town in canada or small town in north america no it's burnaby so there's there was no ambiguity about that. And as we're we were, you know, trying to qualify for funding and this and that and the other thing, one comment back, we missed at least two years of this funding round that is kind of a government kind of a creative thing. It's it's complicated. But anyway, one of the times that, that they denied uh, our because we had the broadcaster, we had YTV. So YTV did give me us some credit in going, oh, well, we know what this, these guys can do. The right. show will be great. Uh, but it was the rest of it that was complicated. So so the rejection that we got from the, let's just say it's the government. It, it's the CTF, Canadian Television Fund, I believe, was the, the sticky wicket. And they said, yeah, it's not Canadian enough. And we went, we all went, are you freaking kidding me what? the thing is like set in a real town in like for real it's made in vancouver at studio b the and it's set, and it's set in, in bc yeah crazy what? anyway bottom line was that was an excuse they didn't have any money that year it was you know some kind of weird i don't know what it was but it was an excuse a really bad excuse yeah. but you know they should have just said nothing so it was a long journey to get that uh, to get that show made. And then we finally did. And it went for uh, 60, some episodes, 50, mm -hmm. some episodes and two movies. Wow. So, yeah, it was good. Oh, I didn't. I forgot about the movies. Yeah, there was the one with uh, uh, the road trip movie. Um, another one called. Uh, oh, maybe that was the same one. And in. Yeah. Yeah. No. An Inconvenient Truth. It was kind of a, a play on the 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 um uh uh, uh 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 oh what was it the um 
<laughs> wow, I'm really not remembering anything. Yeah. Who was the vice president? Al Gore, who uh, who did an inconvenient truth, the the climate documentary uh, okay. was really yeah. huge back then. Yeah. So we did an Ian convenient truth, and there was you know some environmental stuff, and we had David Suzuki come on and play the cool. character. Were they both? And the, both movies were on, were on YTV. Yep. Yeah. Basically, we call them movies. Yeah, but they were like uh, four three or four episodes kind of put together into a movie got you okay now is that like a hard sell or no because you are uh, you're already in the middle of the show the, yeah i mean we we were well into the into the run of series by that time so it wasn't that tough right um uh, but just the and i there must have been a reason why we wanted to do movies right I can't remember why though. No, no worries. Um, and then, um, like you said, Ian Kelly, it was it was like you growing up. Yep. How long did you have Ian Kelly as a character in your brain that you wanted to create? That was this like way before even uh, I uh, oh my gosh, the Yukon. What's his name? Yvonne. Yvonne. Jeez, Louise. No, no, I no, I, I'm you know I was busily trying to uh, pitch new show ideas. And actually, the first broadcaster that was really interested in it was uh, Warner Brothers Ooh, okay. in the States. Yeah, it, it never, never happened. But man, that executive, his name is Christopher Keenan. Awesome guy. Still know him today. Uh, he he tried really hard. He wanted it yeah. to be a WB show. Hmm. Yeah, that would have been. I may never have seen it being in Canada. Exactly. Yeah. Or or maybe it would have. Yeah, true. It would have been even. Oh, yeah, that's that great American show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, no, as I was busy trying to, you know, come up with series ideas and stuff to pitch, I went, well, you know what it was really based on? Here's the real story. Do you remember a show called Malcolm in the Middle? Yes, I do. Frankie Muniz. Yeah. So I watched that and I went, this is great. Like that, that is a great, um, like family show. It wasn't just for kiddies. It was kind of there was a little bit of snark in it. Adult and that family that kids wouldn't get. Yeah, that that family was so close to my family, except I wasn't the middle child. I was the youngest child. Mm. But I but the dynamic was really similar. And I went, I think, I think you know, there's something to that. So I went, well, what would that be? Oh, my life. And oh. and then as I started thinking about it, I went, it's pretty weird actually growing up in a piano store. Yeah. Uh, where we all worked there and we had these weird characters coming in and out the piano tuners and all sorts of stuff. So that was the genesis of it. It, it really, it's not like I, I had had it in my back pocket for 20 years and went, I'm eventually going to do a show about my life. You're sitting no. in the piano store as a kid saying, oh, yeah. this is going to be a show one day. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's so that, that's the, that's how that came about. Uh, and then one show um, I wanted to talk about because they actually brought it back was Johnny test. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're the dad in Johnny test, Johnny, Johnny, <laughs> we're having so, meatloaf. Um, having a show. I think this would be the first one, correct? That like you were on like in the early 2000s and then they brought back what yeah. was that conversation, like bringing, like having it brought back, you know, f w at the actor level, we're not, we're so far away from, any of those conversations it's it you basically just get a uh an email going hey it they're gonna make more oh that's great <laughs> you show up right so like i i just was not involved at that level and honestly like i mean like it wouldn't take much for them to just get another person that could have voiced the dad as in like because it's like the reboot right so like i, yeah. I find that pretty cool that, that they decided to bring you back and i'm sure they brought other original voices back. yeah well. i mean mostly it, it was the original voices for some reason the two sisters uh one sister was was constant for the whole series and that that was uh Mareka hendrix um hendrix son hendrix oh <gasps> anyway Mareka. um that was consistent she was always one of the sisters and the other sister there was probably three or four ladies that I don't know why they just kept changing. The first time it was Ashley ball. Uh oh, I think you froze.
You're frozen. So Marika was the the constant, and then they kept changing the other sister. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, Ashley Ball was the original sister. Um, and then they replaced her, and then they replaced her, and then they replaced... Uh, That's really odd. It was really odd. But basically... The whole original cast uh, came back, except for Louis Chirillo, but he he was, got replaced early. Uh, he was the original voice of Dookie. Okay. And uh, then my my good buddy uh, Trevor Deval replaced him because Louis moved away or something, and hmm. someone said you can't possibly record from wherever you moved to. <laughs> so whatever. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so I got a couple more things for you. Um, adult comedy. This going through your IMDb, that wasn't one thing that I saw very often. No. But the big one I did see was Sausage Party. Ooh, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna talk about adult comedy, that'd be uh, that'd be yeah, that would chief be up among there. them. Yeah. So um, I'm like a huge Seth Rogen, like that group. I'm a huge fan of all of them. So like, yeah. Sausage Party was just like another another great Seth Rogen movie for me. Yeah. So um, how did you become aware of the movie and then the character you play, which was Apple? Yeah. Well, I did, I did a number of characters, um, oh, but I think, that's, I think that's the only one that, that ended up on IMDb. Um, I think it was licorice bag of chips or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it was a bunch of stuff. <laughs> bag of chips. Uh, but I particularly liked the apple because he was just so flamboyant. <laughs> uh, so the the way it works is like anything else. You get an audition. And I guess they were, you know, they were looking. I I knew everyone else that was coming in for this stuff and who ended up in the film. They wanted versatility, you know, like who who can, you know, pull off three or four, four voices of these ancillary characters. Right. And, you know, then I get a call back and went, yeah, you're in. Uh, not sure which one you're going to be. But, uh, you know, here, show up at the session. And, you know, th th we were very f like, I wish I could say that, you know, we hung out with Seth Rogen and they were there for the sessions, but they they weren't. Did you ever meet him? Nope. No way. Eh? Nope. I mean, there well, were a lot of uh, uh, actors in that movie. So, I mean, I'm not entirely surprised because like. And yeah. most of them were L.A. based, like the big the big roles. Were right. All his friends, his friends and comedians and stuff. So, like, you know, right. that, that makes sense. Right. We were we were like the we were like glorified extras, you know, the, the guys in the background, the, the workhorse actors. <laughs> uh, the, so hearing hearing something like, yeah, you got a role, but we don't know which one. Is that like whatever, just another day for you? Or is that or or was that like, oh, that's a little stressful. I'd like to know no. what it is. No. No, because you have that role. I think I think because you have that Rolodex of like voices in your head that Kinda. like whatever one that character they tell you, you're like, oh, this is the one I'm going to use. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, you I think most people who really, really are true voice actors, like people who do it for a living. I think they're they're mostly like like me where you just go. Yeah. What do you what do you need? Right. You know, we'll 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 wing it. Right. How about this? That. Yeah. And then and then the producer will go, nah, I don't know. Well, okay, how about this? All right. Nah. Well, can you can you make it a little lower, a little younger, a little taller? No, that never happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I mean, and we're we're like the complete opposite in that way. Like to me, I feel like I would need to be like, hey, like told this yeah. is what you're doing. This is the this is what we're going for. Ding 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 ding. Right. I understand. That, that's really cool. I I I, I appreciate that. Um, there's two other things I want to talk about was dinosaur train, which both your kids were in. Yeah. So what was that like having your, having your kids in it with you? The best, the yeah. best. Cause I mean, you know, a lot of people have the experience of bring your kid to work day. And my experience was let's all go to work today. Cause right. it was weird. So, yeah. you know, in, in the room, Mm, let's say it would be 25 by 15 feet wide. I positioned myself as far away from them as possible because I didn't want to be dad. Right. Like you guys are two little actors. You go over there. How old were they at the time? Uh, they would have been, you know, seven and nine, maybe, okay. you know, so they were still little kids. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and Craig Bartlett, the, the creator of that show who also did, uh, Hey, Hey Arnold. 
Oh, 90s reference right there. That's another show I love. Fantastic guy. Just like the best to work with. And I remember distinctly sitting there with my headphones on going, listening to my kids and listening to the performances that they were, the lines they were reading going, Ooh, ah, Ooh, I don't know. Dad and, mode. Yeah. I think, I, I think I'd get him to do that again. Uh, mm, was that clear? I didn't even know if that was clear. Uh, and Craig was just so loose and like, he was so good with the kids and uh, unusually he directed in the room. Like he wasn't behind the glass. He was in the room with us. And I think that really helped. And then when I finally saw the finished product, I went, yeah, no, he was absolutely right. My, like I'm sweating all this stuff going, eh, 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 trying to, as my, as my great uh, co-writer, music collaborator, Hoot Gibson, the guy that co-wrote um, Yvonne of the Yukon song, uh, he's, <laughs> he had this great expression, picking the fly shit out of the pepper. <laughs> And that's what I was doing. I was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, these, these kids are great. So right. it was wonderful. Yeah. Now, are they, do they do any voice acting since that? Or was nope. that just kind of, that was it? Interesting. That's really cool. It was cool that you got, you had that one experience together. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about was a little different than TV shows was video games. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite games as a kid, I would say it would be about late elementary school, even early high school. I was still playing this with my friends was Lil Big Planet. I love we loved Lil Big Planet. So you were in two and three. Wow. Was yeah. I? You were. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Do you know Lil, what Lil Big Planet is? <laughs> no, you don't. The little, no. the little sock guy. Oh, yeah. You were. It, I can't remember the exact, uh, the exact little role. big planet. Lil Big Planet. Yeah. Hold on, I'll get you the exact uh, the exact character you played. Uh, in Little Big Planet Two, you were Da Vinci slash Woody. Oh, Sack Boy. Yes. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that now. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So those those two were my. Or I. That I was so, so cute. Yes. I, I loved that game because me and my friends could play it. Like I, I'd play at my PlayStation, they play at uh, theirs at home, and like we'd make up our own little levels and everything. That was such a fun game. So, was there any difference? in video games to TV show? They are different. Yeah. Are they? Um, you know, video game, you're, you're usually, um, alone, mm -hmm. you know, just doing your thing by yourself in a room and it's a string of lines. So you really have to have a good director, um, to, to, to let you know what the heck is going on. Right. But, oh yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, Little Big Planet two and three. Right when I saw that, I was so excited. I told my friends that I used to play with. I was like, I'm gonna talk to a guy that was in those games. The amount of hours we spent playing those games was insane. Like I said, like we were probably playing that up to like grade nine, maybe grade ten. Like we 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 loved those games with a passion. <clears throat> so that that's, that's funny that the that's you, really know, cool. you you think of Sackboy, which makes sense. He's that's the little main guy. So yeah, that makes sense. That's and sweet. and sorry, what? Tell me again, what was my character name? Da Vinci and Woody. Cool. Was in number two, and then in number three, you were just Da Vinci. Yeah, number two came out in twenty eleven, and I was in grade nine slash ten. So yeah, I was I was still playing that well into high school. Those games, which is which is really funny. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, IMDb might not be correct all the time, but it's correct in this in this sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, looking so. at I'm oh I'm looking at all my old friends here. The, yeah, there must, there must be so many shows and games and movies that you just totally forget about. No. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Like I don't even know if IMDb has like an actual number. Oh yeah. So actor it says for titles for you two hundred and sixty three. And then the titles were 302 titles. How accurate that is, I'm not sure, but that's a lot either way. It's uh, it, not to sound like a, can I swear on this? Yeah. Not to sound like a shit, but that sounds low. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm not surprised. That's funny. That's, that's insane that, 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 that's low. Oh, another game was destiny. Destiny oh, 2. yeah. That, okay. That one I remember. That's not that long ago. Yeah. And that one was a big game for, um, I think the original Destiny came out while I was in high school. Then the second one came out. I was already, uh, I think, well into college. So it, 
but those were big games. I remember. Yeah, it was uh, Finch, the Hive Ghost. Yes, the guy who you know says, "Hey, psst, come over this way. I want to show you something." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're basically an NPC before people made that a popular thing. Yeah, and and seeing that you're in uh, Ontario, there's a new game that just came out. Um, it's a little title called Overwatch. Yes. Uh, Overwatch it, Two, yeah. and there's they they travel around within the game to mm-hmm. these different locales, and one of them is Toronto. Oh, really? And I play uh, Reggie, who's a robot lawyer that's very much like um, Saul Goodman in yeah. in Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, yeah. So that's so yeah. cool. There's not many video games, if any, that Toronto's ever in. Yeah, that's really cool. Cool. that's that's really sweet one thing i remember as a kid because i was a big gta fan um is I, I always wanted them to make a grand theft auto game based in toronto i thought that would have been the coolest thing in the world yeah there would be no market for it en- or enough just because <laughs> like I, the, the world compared to toronto is a little different but yeah that was i remember always that and breaking bad game that, now that you mentioned saul goodman a, a gta but breaking bad i always thought would be cool yeah, actually, like that's a great open, idea. Open world, yeah. I've seen it on uh, TikTok and Twitter, people talking about it, and I just thought that was that would be really cool. But uh, yeah, Ian, that's what I, all I got for you. I I really appreciate you coming on here, especially on your birthday. That that one I do really appreciate. <laughs> but um, the the number one thing I think I may take away from this is the fact that you're the voice on the commercial slash bumpers of Family Channel. The yeah, go I'm look I'm I don't know what there will be, but. Yeah, the the second I run downstairs, I'm gonna tell my fiance that because that mine and hers favorite channel as kids were was Family Channel. So that's on really cool. Family, I love that so much. Actually, can you? This may be a weird request. Can you say the Quinn Mar show on Family? Sure. Uh, you've been listening to the. Qu- Sorry, hold on. What's your last name? Mar M A R R. Mar. Okay. Yeah, I thought I missed something. Okay. You've been listening to the Quinn Mar show. On family. Life You've been listening amazing. to the Quinn Mar show on family. Hey, this is the Quinn Mar show on family. I love that so much. Ian, you're the best. Uh, again, thank you very much for coming on. And I will send you that clip and we'll yeah. figure out if that was you or not. Cause I, I am interested and I'm, I'm sure you are too, but uh, yeah, again, thank you. And uh, I will talk to you later. Thank you again. You're the thank best. You. If there's anything before we go, if there's anything you would like to plug, the floor is yours uh yeah well uh okay the, the i guess the last thing was overwatch um if you want it for if your if your audience is kind of canadian put on your steel toe boots because i'm going to drop a name here uh it's a couple of years old but it's a movie called greyhound with uh tom hanks i'm i i'm like a co-star with john uh, john <laughs> tom mm-hmm. <Dude laughs> it was a great experience more. story for another time uh, and I play the Canadian, uh, like destroyer captain that helps him get through the German waters. And it, my name's Dickie and he's talking to me all the time. It's kind of cool. So there's that it's old. Um, and then there's an upcoming title that I can't tell you about, but it's one of the biggest video games in the world coming out probably the new year. Just kind of watch my Instagram feed, which is if you want to see what I'm up to Ian James Corlett on Instagram, you'll catch up on whatever i'm doing awesome okay well yeah ian thank you again and uh we'll, we'll definitely be in touch great thanks for having me no problem ciao ciao and that was the quid bar show